Hello, I'm Tony Mesa with Tony Mesa Real Estate School. Today I'm going to cover the basics of investment analysis. I have a formula up here on the board which we're going to go through. This is the basic foundation of investment analysis. There are additional things that in later videos we'll cover, but this is the, the key foundational uh, formula that's used to begin investment analysis. Um, this is on the Real Estate Sales Associates test. It's on the Real Estate Brokers test in the state of Florida. Um, but also, this is a general interest thing for anybody who's interested in investing, or maybe you're a real estate professional that is working with an investor. You can use this to analyze a single family home or a duplex that's being purchased as an investment. You could also use this to analyze an apartment complex, uh, commercial property. Um, so, beginning here with uh, the first uh, initials, PGI. That's the potential gross income. The potential gross income is how much money is coming in if all the property is rented out all the time. Um, it's called the potential, potential gross income. So in the name, it tells you what it's about. So from that, we're going to subtract what are called vacancy and collection losses. Vacancy and collection losses is, even if it's a great property, you're still going to have some tenants move it might be empty for a month before you rent it out again. So you're going to have some vacancies. What's a collection loss? A collection loss is a U-Haul at 3 in the morning. Somebody's leaving. They're splitting and you're not getting all the money that you're owed. Um, so from the potential gross income, we subtract the vacancy and collection losses and we get the EGI. EGI stands for effective gross income. The effective gross income is how much money should really be coming in, is really actually going to come in. So you're not really going to get that potential gross income because you will always have some vacancy and collection losses. This is the gross income that's actually coming in. It's called the effective gross income. From that, we need to subtract OE, the operating expenses. So things like property taxes you might have to pay, insurance you might have to maintain, uh, if there's common area, electrical, garbage collection, these sort of things, right? When you have the effective gross income and you subtract the operating expenses, that gives you the NOI, net operating income. So it's just, you know, you have the gross, you subtract the expenses, you're left with the net, the net operating income. Um, if you bought it cash, if the property is bought cash, that would end right there. But most properties, what happens is some type of financing. So there is DS, debt service. Um, so that's the yearly loan payment. And when you take the NOI and you subtract the debt service, the net operating income minus the debt service, that gives you what is called the cash throw off, also called the before tax cash flow. So cash throw off, how much cash the property is throwing off after all the expenses and the debt service, also called the before tax cash flow because you're not taking your tax considerations into account at this point yet. Um, now, this is the basic formula. Uh, there are some parts of the country where the, the names might be slightly different, uh, but this is a common way that it's used, right? This structure right here. Uh, what about going through an example with this? Let's go through a simple one. So let's say you have 10 units. Each one of the units rents for 900 bucks a month. It could be 10 apartments. It could be a commercial space uh, where you have 10 units, or it could be, you know, warehouse bays or whatever if it's an industrial complex. But there are 10 units, each one rents for 900 bucks a month. So that would be $9,000 a month. 10 times 900, 9,000 a month. And then you have to take that 9,000 a month and you need to multiply it by 12. And that's going to give you 108,000. Now, what did I just do? I made that a yearly number. Whenever you're using this, you're always going to annualize the numbers. You're going to make them yearly numbers. This is the, the way this analysis is done, right? So 108,000 is your potential gross income. That's how much would come in if all the units are rented out all the time and you have no vacancy and collection losses. But you are gonna have some vacancy and collection losses as we said. In this example, I've just told you that the vacancy and collection loss is 5%. Um, so I'm giving you that as a number. Again, later on we'll go through more detail on where these numbers come from. But in this example, the vacancy and collection loss is 5%. 5% 5 of 108,000 is 5,000 400, right? So the idea is that the potential gross income is 108,000 minus vacancy and collection losses of 5,400. That's going to give you 102,600. That's the effective gross income. The effective gross income is how much should actually be coming in gross, right? So you're never going to get that much into your bank account. Uh, that's how much is really going to come in, right? 
From this, we need to subtract the operating expenses. And again, this is one of the things, you know, when you're dealing with investment property, you know, the, the numbers they give you about their expenses, do they make sense, do they not make sense? Um, let me just give you one example. Maybe you're buying it from somebody who owns it cash and they've owned it for 30 years and this guy doesn't have insurance on the building, you know? Um, so with his numbers, he's not taking into account insurance on the building. But if you're gonna buy it and you're getting a loan, you need to have insurance. Or even if you're not gonna have a loan, you're obviously gonna feel more comfortable with insurance. So the idea is that you have to look carefully at those numbers. But things like, as we said, property taxes, insurance, maintenance, uh, expenses, uh, common area, electrical, garbage collection. Um, if you're gonna pay a property manager to manage it for you, all these things are operating expenses. In this example, I am telling you that the operating expenses, 40,000 for the year, right? So that is a, a yearly number, right? Not a monthly number, it's just 40,000 for the year. So what happens is we take the effective gross, gross minus the operating expenses and we get the net, the net, or the NOI or the net operating income of 62,600, right? So that's how much is gonna be left to you after you've paid your operating expenses. In this example, you have a loan payment of $3,000 per month times 12 months in the year, right? You gotta make them yearly numbers. So that's gonna be 36,000 is your yearly loan payment, right? So the idea is that you then take the net operating income of 62,600 minus the debt service of 36,000 and you're left with 26,000 600 as your cash throw off or before tax cash flow. Now, as I said, again, this is the basic formula that's used for investment analysis. So this is also called, uh, this is the beginning of what's called uh, income capitalization. We're gonna talk about these things in more detail later on. If you like these videos and you want more of these videos, um, there are a few things you can do. You can uh, give me a thumbs up and join my YouTube channel. So these videos are being put on YouTube. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, which is Tony Mesa Real Estate School, um, and then uh, a Google Plus page, Tony Mesa Real Estate School. Um, and uh, as always, the website for those of you interested in getting your Florida real estate license is www.tonymesarealestateschool.com. It's all one word, okay? So you can go there, you can see uh, what the class schedule are, what the class schedules are, um, when, what, which classes we're having. Um, it's got a questions and answers. I've also got a blog on there with different real estate topics and the frequently asked questions about getting the real estate license. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.